Oh, yeah. You know what time it is. That's right. It's time for the Eddie and Webby Podcast. <laughs> Yo, I'm going to bust out some theme song action for you. Check it out. The Eddie and Webby Show is the place to be. They're talking about beer and pickleball and technology. So if you didn't know, now you know. Because it's time for the Eddie and Webby Show. On today's episode, Eddie and Webby sell their souls. This is the Eddie and Webby Podcast. All right, just add a little bit of garlic powder here, stir it around, and give it a little taste test. What do we got here? Oh, hey, how's it going? This is Webby, not Eddie. And I'm Eddie, and this is our 51st podcast. Oh, yeah, episode number 51. That's right. We have a great show for you guys tonight. We not only have one guest, but we actually have two guests that are going to be joining us tonight which is always fun right webby it is always fun having two guests i love it yes and guess what guys we are live we're live on facebook we're live on youtube and for that one person that cares we are live on twitch this is meant to be interactive (laughs) so if you have comments or questions for us for you're not going to have any questions for us we know you guys all you (laughs) all you care about is our guests so and that's fine with us. if you have any questions for our guests Feel free to throw them in the chat for Facebook, YouTube, or Twitch. Yes, we love to interact, so please send us your questions, your comments, and we'll get to as many as we can live on the air. That's right. A couple things we want to go over before we get to our guests, though. The first thing is, today's show is sponsored by us. That's right. We're talking about the Eddie and Webby store, and oh, check that out. There's a little picture of our friend Cass Gerke sporting that awesome pickleball for life hoodie check that oh out. yeah love it love that picture that's right Thanks, Cass, for representing yeah really appreciate that Cass. love the hoodie i like how it matches her uh, her hat as well yeah good, uh, good nice combo there um but guess what webby what if you go to eddieandwebby.com forward slash store and use coupon code pickle 10 at checkout you're going to get 10% off your order. No way. You got to be kidding me. Way. Totally. Nice. And it's kind of yes. funny you bring this up. Uh, That's totally unplanned, but you could get something kind of like this t-shirt I'm wearing right now. Can you believe that? No way. <laughs> Pickleball for life. That's right. Go ahead and check out our store, and uh, we hope you enjoy the products. You can get iPhone cases. You can get a bunch of different stuff here, but enough self-promotion. Yeah, enough of that. I'm sick of it. Yeah. We want to get to our guests here pretty soon. But before we do that, Webby, what's going on in Twitter? Ah, yes. Twitter. Good old Twitter. The comments just keep on rolling. And today is no exception. So let's go ahead and read a couple of comments on the Twitter sphere right now. Here's one from Ronald McDonald Glover. He says, Eddie and Webby, episode 50 with Simone was by far my favorite episode yet. We saw a side of her I've never seen before, and I loved it. Nice. I agree. I think it was cool that we were able to get her to talk about her college experiences playing beer pong and uh, getting sick from playing beer pong. That was uh, was a side of Simone that a lot of people don't see, so that was very cool. Yeah, I loved it. I thought it was awesome and a great time. She was a great guest. Um, Let's do another comment here on Twitter. Here's one from Fart Paul Gosseler. He says, I wonder how much money Eddie and Webby had to pay Simone to appear on their ridiculous show. I'm assuming a lot. Ouch. Oh, come on. We didn't we didn't have to pay her a lot to be on the show. Yeah, just a, only a, a few thousand. That's all. Yeah, I mean, we obviously had to pay her to be on the show, but not that right. much. No, I'm just kidding. She's not just going to come. We, <laughs> yeah, she's not just going to come. No, we did, we did not show. pay her, just to be clear. Simone, we did not pay you. We know that. That's right. <laughs> But uh, all right, let's do one more comment here on Twitter. Uh, here's one from Lob Ross. Eddie and Webby, I love all the pro pickleball player cameos in your Pickleball for Life music video. Simone's appearance is my favorite. She seems like a very fun person. Nice. Awesome comment. Thank you for that. Much appreciated. And yes, she 
is a very fun person. I can I can attest to that. That's right. Very uh, very Simone focused Twitter comments, but we <laughs> yeah. definitely appreciate them. Uh, feel free to tweet to us. Um, yes, indeed, Rooney. Oh, and one more comment we got to get to. Uh, yeah. For those that tuned into episode fifty, we have not forgotten about the big free hoodie giveaway, and that's going to happen on today's show at the end of the show. So you need to stay tuned. We're going to randomly select one of our YouTube subscribers. So anybody that is a YouTube subscriber is in the running, and we will randomly select a winner at the end of the episode. Okay. Can they still subscribe right now and be eligible? You can. Yeah, absolutely. So go ahead and subscribe, and we will pull from the subscriber list at the end of the show. That's right. Um, awesome. Anything else we want to cover before we bring on our guests here, Webby? No, I think we've uh, wasted enough of everybody's time. I think we should just get right to the action. I like it. Um, this is going to be a very fun episode. I'm super excited to talk to today's guests. They are both co-hosts of a very popular pickleball podcast that Eddie and I are huge fans of. One of them joined us back on episode 36, and the other is a first-timer here on the Eddie and Webby podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the show the hosts of the Pickleball Kitchen podcast, Barrett Kinchelow and Jana Lightfoot. Thank you very much for joining us. How are you guys doing? Hey guys, how's it going? Doing, doing great, great here. Thank you for having us. Nice. Yeah, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, like I said, Eddie and I are both big fans of your podcast, and uh, we had a great time with Barrett last time, so we're uh, very happy to have both of you here tonight. This is going to be very cool. Well, thanks for tuning into the show. We, we really appreciate it, man. And I, We love y'all's show as well. Nice. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so, Barrett, when you were with us back in episode 36, uh, we learned quite a bit about your background and how you first got into pickleball. So I think it's only fair that if we start today's show by learning a bit about Jana. Uh, so Jana, I'd love to find out how you first got involved in this crazy world of pickleball that we all love. Well, it was, uh, I think, uh, a great serendipitous moment, if you will. Um, I was actually on a little vacation down in uh, Cabo, and I was with some friends. And at this particular uh, resort, there were pickleball courts. And he said, hey, let's go play pickleball. And, of course, like everybody else, the first time they hear that, we're like, what is that? <laughs> and so we ran over and um, played pickleball for a couple of hours, and I instantly fell in love Um you know, I grew up in a home with a with two big brothers, and so we always played. I'm very competitive, which I've described many times on the, on the podcast, um, and so I was instantly hooked. And you know, we didn't know what in the world we were doing. We were just wailing on that ball back and forth, um, but we loved it. We laughed. We had so much fun. It was hot. Um, it was just an absolute blast. And so. That was the first time I played, and about eight months later, I was in another, I was in California, and somebody there said, hey, here's pickleball courts, let's go play, and um, I said, yeah, I've played once and loved it, and then after that, it was probably about another six months after that, so now we're in the spring of uh, 2017, and I just went to like an open rec play gym and started playing, and I had a little bit of free time that year, so I was started playing you know, just about every day, four or five times a week. So it didn't take long to be off to the races. Nice. And uh, I don't know about you guys, uh, but like for, for Eddie and I, pickleball has pretty drastically <laughs> changed our lives. Just like we've only been really heavily involved for a little over a year. So uh, Barrett, uh, I'll start with you. How, how has pickleball changed your life? <laughs> uh, it's been a complete it's been a complete life changer. Like it's not even, it's not even close to being like anything else. I mean, totally. It's, it's one of these things where it's like events. Like when I remember something, I'm like, was that pre pickleball or was that post pickleball? <laughs> right. I mean, it's that, it's, it's that extreme, you know, just oh, um, yeah. not only from the play standpoint of actually playing the game and being involved in it and, you know, playing in tournaments and stuff like that, but pickleball kitchen itself, the 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 website and stuff, has also been completely life changing as well. Coming, especially coming off a horrible business failure, <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, it's been it's been totally life changing. I mean, it's not even like I don't even almost don't even remember myself four years ago. You know, very very different. 
it's it's right. hard to even remember what we did with all of our time. Yeah. Oh, like, I know. What did I yeah. do on. I mean, as much as I play pickleball, I'm like, how did I fit anything else into my life before pickleball? Because clearly, I had a lot of extra time. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah, I feel the, that I was not way. that I was not aware of. Yeah, because I feel like I have like hardly any free time, but somehow I managed to fit in hours and hours of pickleball every single week. <laughs> like it's, it's crazy, and That's right. like I, like it's it's crazy. The last year, like I've my my vacation time from work has highly revolved around my pickleball plans. <laughs> yeah, no, it's interesting, isn't it? Because like three years ago, I would claim to be busy. Well, I was clearly lying. Because now <laughs> I've just magically been able to fit in, you know, 10 to 15 hours of pickleball every week, right? So, yeah, clearly I right. wasn't busy. <laughs> clearly not. Well, yeah. So, yeah, same here. Like a few years ago before pickleball, I felt the same way. I felt like I never had free time. Yet now I play pickleball like crazy. Um, I shoot and edit videos like crazy for the YouTube channel. We do this podcast and all the planning that goes into that. I'm like, how how is this even possible? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. But, Exactly. I love it though. I, I would not uh, not change it for a moment. I'm loving, just I've been loving life for the last year. That's all I can say. <laughs> Us too. Well, and I tell you, I would play more if I could find people to play more. You know, like at night, the only thing that I'm really lacking are more victims to go out and just <laughs> you know play all evening because I have to play at night because I work in the day. So I go out, you know, and in Texas, it's very hot still. So we start at 730 at night and play till about 11 p.m. Um, and as many nights as I can find people to play, I will do it. <laughs> nice. So I assume you guys have a lot of uh, lit courts in your area. Is that right? So you can play or uh, do you just play till like it's dark? No, we have a lot of lit courts. Um, it depends on the area. It's actually very random in Dallas, like what is good and what isn't. So, you know, we don't have very many permanent pickleball courts. They're coming along. They're starting to trickle along. But a lot of it is like, you know, junior tennis courts with lines on them, that kind of stuff. Oh, okay. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Okay. Our, our city park codes, um, you know, are make it possible for – tennis court lights to stay on till 11 p.m. And then they automatically shut shut off. Yeah. And so that allows us, you know, where we've got, you know, marked courts to play until 11 o'clock. Yeah. So we do. Yeah, okay. That's not bad. I would love to have lit courts where I'm at. I, there's none anywhere close to me that have lit courts. But then again, I'm in Michigan. So um, there's a, a big portion of the year that we can't even play outside because of the, the winters and stuff like that. Oh, but, right. Of course. But I feel like... Well, one of these days, there'll be some lit courts in the around Michigan, in my area. I mean, there's some in Grand Rapids, but none really in southeast Michigan that I'm aware of. Mm. Well, do you all have many uh, indoor courts there? We don't have that option hardly at all. It, currently, in the area that, that I live in, there's not any super close. There's like, if you go an hour east, there's some. And then if you go to Grand Rapids, there's some there. Uh, but there's really not a whole lot. Most of the, the a majority of the play in fall and winter is on gym courts that just put up portable yeah. nets with, with lines and stuff. And some of the gymnasiums have dedicated lines, but then they still use the portable nets and that'll do. And that's what I, that's what I started off with. And I was totally fine with that. And I would always call people snobs if they like refuse to play on gym court surface. But after playing a lot of outdoor pickleball this summer, I, I kind of get it now. <laughs> Like it's, I'm kind of right. dreading playing yeah. on the gym court surfaces this winter. <laughs> right. Yeah. And I've gotten um, decisively worse at indoor pickleball because I play so much outdoor now. When I go indoor, it's a little bit of a disaster because my timing is off and I really don't do it as much as I used to. But when winter comes, I will have to. Uh, just because of the addiction, go back to the gym court <laughs> play. <laughs> we could right. talk. We could talk of like twenty more minutes just about that subject. Like I already have like an entire thing in my head of what to talk about with that because it's a big topic of how do you balance between outdoor and indoor play. Right. Yeah, absolutely. You could definitely spend a lot of time on that, and that actually brings me to my next question. Like when it comes to the podcast, uh, like what goes into the process for you guys when it comes to coming up with a topic? Because you guys always have such great topics. Um, I always learn something new every time I listen to your episode. I'm sure everybody that everybody else that listens to it does as well. So, how, how do you guys come up with the topics, and what process do you go through when you are planning out a podcast? 
Um, you know, the big thing is we're connected to so many people that we just kind of know what's going on in people's heads and in people's pickleball lives, basically. So we know kind of what their pain points are and we know what they're having trouble with, right? So um, we've been through that whole process. The, the unique thing about us is that we didn't play a racket sport before pickleball, but yet we've really gotten a lot better, right? So we've been there. <laughs> we, we've, we've been in that horrible spot where you just can't get the ball down, man, you know, and it's so frustrating and yada, yada, yada. So we, we just say, okay, let's, uh, what's, what's going to help people the most in this next episode? What should we talk about that we know people have trouble with? Um, as an example, there was one topic, I think it was, I can't remember which episode it was, but it was about the social web of pickleball about the social problems, the getting rejected in open play, the finding partners, getting you know, all that sort of stuff. And we sat on that topic for like three months. We said we need to do this eventually because we know that people want to hear about it. But it was very difficult, extremely difficult to talk about, you know, because it's it's kind of a, you know, you can step on people's toes, right? So um, it's it's a thing where we say, is what we're going to talk about today going to be super useful for people? And if not, then, well, we'll have to do it another time or maybe we'll build on a little bit. But if so, then yeah, we'll just, we'll just go for it. And a lot of it is just coming up with like five bullet points. Like I'll literally get a Google document, put like five Google point, Google or, um, uh, bullet points on there, share it with Jana. And then she's like, okay. And that's it. And then we just, we just go for it from there. All right. Nice. Um, so I would actually love to learn a little more about your origin story, like when you two met and stuff like that. But before we do that, uh, Eddie, I'm getting a little bit thirsty, so I kind of want to crack open a, a beverage just real quick here. Um, do you have anything Uh-oh. that you're uh, you're drinking today? <laughs> well, I am. And, uh, you know, as I've mentioned a few times in the last few episodes, I'm on a quest to be able to find the best hard seltzer out there. Uh, and I've tried a bunch, guys, and I'm still Henry's is still at the top of my list, and so I okay. am enjoying this right now. I, I typically am a beer guy, but for some reason, I I'm loving these these hard sparkling waters, and uh, I'm gonna keep rolling with that. This I'm having the lemon lime flavor right now. All right. All what right. about you, Webby? And uh, I actually got something uh, special here that I haven't had in many, many years. Um, I took a break from the craft beer that I usually drink. I got kind of jealous because you've been drinking these seltzers for like, well, the last five or six episodes now. Mm -hmm. Um, So it's not really considered hard seltzer, but it's like the closest thing. And I feel like this is almost like the, like the, the motivation. This is kind of like the original hard seltzer type drink, if you will. And that is the one and only Oh, Zima. Come on. <laughs> Where did you find that? <laughs> so like about, uh, I think it was like a year or so ago, they like, it, it got brought back just for like a very, it was like a limited release, limited time offer. Zima came back and I picked it up. And originally I was going to drink it last year for April Fool's Day. If we did, if we did a, a show on April Fool's Day. So I've had these in my fridge ever since then. So they've aged nicely. Um, so we'll see. I have some nice <laughs> aged Zima here and uh, Zima. <laughs> we'll see how this goes. And yes, it is a twist off. So I do not even need a bottle opener. So uh, yeah, so that's what I'll nice. be sipping on today. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Cheers. Uh, Cheers. What about you, Jana and Barrett? Are you, you guys drinking anything there? I have an empty glass of water. Okay, but we have to have a true confession over here. Barrett is going, what, Zima? <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, man. Oh, how, boy. How young my, are you? My reaction, <laughs> my reaction was like, oh, Zima. Yeah, right? Zima, I don't know. What, it sounds uh, familiar, though. It does sound familiar. I'm actually drinking a... Um, non-alcoholic drink made here in Texas called Big Swig. And what got me, and I couldn't find it, so I had to settle for another flavor, but there is a pickle flavor Big Swig. Mm. So oh, nice. uh, stay, <laughs> stay tuned on feedback from that, but all I could get right, right now was the, the ruby red grapefruit. <laughs> okay. Nice. That sounds good. 
Uh, but just in case for people like Barrett that aren't familiar with what Zima is, it is described as a refreshing citrus beverage. It was very popular so, in the 90s, like um, early to mid 90s. Oh, that's why. Yeah, it was. Uh, <laughs> you know, what big, big thing back in college is a lot of girls would drink it and they would put a Jolly Rancher in there. And so it would give it like the, <laughs> the flavor. Yeah, that was. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. That what were the what were the the wine coolers? You know, they were before that, oh, and so um, wine coolers made a run, and then Zima. Yeah, yeah, like yep. Bar Bartles and James was that was that what it was called? Yes, yeah, yes. Oh, yeah. I, the, I could not remember that part of it. <laughs> yes, the wine coolers. Oh yeah, is uh, the is Boone's Farm cooler. still a thing? Do you guys remember Boone's Farm? I remember Boone's Farm, um, and then the other one. I think the one that kind of came on the scene, you know, was the Mike's brand mm -hmm. lemonade hard lemonade oh yeah so yeah, i recognize that one lemonade, those, those took <laughs> off yeah those those uh yeah those were one huge i feel me. like that yeah i feel like that kind of like i i never saw anybody drink uh wine coolers or zima once the like the mike's hard line yes. of drinks that's came right. out <laughs> oh that's hilarious <laughs> but all right so now that my thirst is quenched i guess i mean this yeah this doesn't uh isn't really my thing. I probably will not purchase this again, but uh, it's probably good because it was a li limited release last year. It probably isn't even sold anymore. So, yeah, I, w it, I will not be missing it from my life if I don't get it again. But uh, anyway, back to you guys. Uh, so one thing I've been wondering is how, how did you two actually meet each other for the first time? How did that go about? Well, what do you remember? <laughs> I was actually thinking about that today. And all I really remember is just playing together at open play. I mean, that's where we met. And, um, you know, there was a church not too far from where we both live that had play all day, Saturday, almost, you know, Monday night, Tuesday night, Thursday night. So we kind of found ourselves in the same spot two or three times a week. And so we just started playing and it was clear that we were both learning um, and we're kind of on the same journey. But I'm not really sure what motivated Barrett to even ask me um, if I would do this. I, I don't I don't really know. So do tell. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I've ever even heard. What well, inspired you to ask me? Well, first of all, just to let everyone know, we were really bad at pickleball back then. So, I mean, we were like <laughs> so terrible at the game. It was just, it was so funny. But, um, so I started the podcast in, I think it was late July, 2017. So almost, almost two years ago. And, uh, I did the first seven episodes by myself. I did, I actually did the fourth episode. It was an interview. It was with, uh, Heather Canny, the lady that, that runs Pickleball at the church that we played at where we met. And so by the time the seventh episode came around, it was getting so horrible doing it by myself. I mean, I could, I couldn't, why, what are you laughing for? <laughs> because I can only imagine. <laughs> it was terrible. I, I could hardly get through like 25 minutes of talking about s paddle cores and stuff. I mean, it was like the geekiest podcast <laughs> You know, I may as well have been talking about like software or something and, you know, it just didn't have a lot of personality to it. Not, not that I lack personality, but when you're doing it by yourself, there's just, there's not, there's not a lot of contrast, right? That's why you have a co-host. You have a co-host oh, yeah. because you get contrast in the conversation, right? So I thought to myself, well, who would be a good person <laughs> to have as a co-host? <laughs> Maybe I was your only, but I was your only friend. No. no. <laughs> At pickleball, not in life. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I, so, well, that's interesting though, right? Because we really didn't know that many people back then, but I thought about it. I thought, well, it's got to be, it's got to be female, right? Because you got to have, because I listened to many podcasts where the, it was male and female and it makes it so much more interesting. So I thought, okay, got to be female. So I had like a list of probably two or three people, but most of them were, were really busy. And oh, the truth is out. I wasn't the first person he asked. No, I didn't ask. I, I only asked you. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Barrett. I only asked you. <laughs> so, so I think I remember what I remember is going into open play. And I mean, this is back when I was getting no downloads. I mean, I was getting maybe like one or two downloads a week. Mom, like, it was horrible. Yeah, basically, like, honey, I enjoy, honey, I enjoyed your episode. Like, oh, man, <laughs> come on. But sweet Kathy, but um, 
so I remember just just walking in to open play. I think I was maybe a little bit nervous because I was afraid of what you what she was going to say, like how she was going to react to it. Like that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Mm-hmm. What you know? But I just sat down and said, "Hey, like I've got this podcast. It doesn't get any downloads, and like no one listens to it. But you want to be a co-host?" <laughs> and she was like, "Sure, why not?" I'm like, "Great." <laughs> And let's meet at my office. I have this little office up north, and we can we can uh, do it. Try it out, do an episode, and she just slid right into it. Easy peasy, professional <laughs> level stuff was no problem. Our first episode was about how to get beginners into pickleball, like the best approach to, to take to take episode eight, and she just I mean it was just perfect, perfect. And we haven't gone back, and we've done it the same way since. I really That's didn't awesome. know I was signing up for like a year and a half, Yeah, <laughs> but it's been so fun. Yeah. I mean, most podcasts don't last past like episode three. So the fact that we're about to get to a hundred soon is, is pretty incredible really. And we're grateful for everyone for listening, by the way, we really, we we appreciate everyone. Yeah. It's such a great podcast and you guys have such great chemistry. And we told Barrett this last time, like we, we thought he did great when he did do the show by himself, but once you joined Jana, it just added an extra element and uh, the chemistry that you guys have playing off of each other and just like your different experiences. I mean, it's, it's awesome. Love it. Would you like to tell everyone about the Jana fan clubs? <laughs> yeah. So, well, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank I, you. I, I, what, I think what Barrett probably didn't really know about me at the time is that, um, you know, give me a microphone and a crowd <laughs> and I'll just step right up and take care of it, you know? Um, so it's been really fun and it's, you know, it's easy to, uh, you know, do this with Barrett and he's so great at really framing everything up. So, you know, my part's, um, super easy. Um, but what were, you know, what do you want me to say next? So remember the, the story about, Oh, okay. So for months on end, uh, we got lots of great comments about me. <laughs> So every, we would, you know, I would, we'd have people around here that would travel to Arizona and one, another guy was in Ohio and all you know, Florida and they would say, oh yeah, we, there's a podcast there. Do y'all know Jana? And so we love her. And so then oh, we would man. also get, um, you know, some comments, you know, some really sweet comments on, uh, you know, on the podcast, you know, just through email or whatever. Yeah. And so Barrett was like, why do they like you so much better than me? What can <laughs> I do? So we we had a really good time with that. So Barrett does have a lot of fans too. Um, and so again, it's just been, you know, easy for both of us, but I get to have, I get to do all the fun stuff. So I think it's just, you know, pretty natural to, you know, I get to be the one to laugh and Poke fun at Barrett. <laughs> the co-host is the co-host is like the one that like people love the co-host. Like that's just how that's just like a thing and and <laughs> and podcasting. So, but like she, she uh, one guy in particular, a friend of ours, went to Arizona, and they they knew a, he mentioned that he was from the DFW area, and uh, they said, "Oh yeah, we listened to a podcast. Like we like Barrett and all, but we really like that Jana girl." Like, <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> no, but we 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 have a lot of fun with it. Yeah, we have a lot of fun with the jokes and and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, it's all it's all good. It's all good. And the listeners have been really super kind, yeah. um, and gracious. And you know, it's really been fun. Um, I even went somewhere and started talking, and someone said, "I recognize your voice. Are you Jana from the podcast?" And so it was really kind of. It's been kind of fun to see those things unfold. And again, just listeners have been wonderful. Um, and I think that's just another testament to the sport um, that people are just genuinely kind and interested um, and the community that we have together, um, you know, just because of the fun and the c- kind of the common goals. Um, you know, it's just really been neat to, to see all of this unfold. Yeah, it's been incredible, especially starting from nothing, from absolutely nothing. Just you know. an idea. Yeah, just an idea. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. Is awesome. <laughs> yeah. Well, and then, uh, Barrett, I got to give you major props for even attempting to start this podcast on your own for as long as you did, because I can't even imagine trying to do this without Eddie. Um, I'm not sure. I'm, he might feel the same way. I don't know. But like, it's just, uh, it's, there's been a couple times where like he would leave for a few minutes and I had it by myself 
And I was like, man, this, this is like the longest five minutes of my life. What am I doing? I hope he gets back soon. It's like, it just, it doesn't have the same feel. It doesn't have the same flow uh, without us like playing off of each other and stuff like that. So yeah, I mean, I big props just for you even starting the podcast on your own and doing as many episodes as you did on your own because they, they were still great episodes. Thanks. Yeah, and I've, I've done solo episodes when Jana can't make it too. So it's really hard because you have no feedback loop, right? You have no... You have no person to bounce things off of, right? So it, it's it's right. challenging, but you know it doesn't matter now because we have to put out an episode. It doesn't matter if I don't like to do it or not. If I don't put out an episode, <laughs> oh no, <laughs> oh no, a riot! The well, fans think, will riot. <laughs> yeah. Well, and that was another deliberate, you know, kind of part of what Barrett wanted to do. Once we, because in the beginning we were doing them a little. Um, haphazardly, yeah. you know, we really didn't have a real frequency or routine. And then it just became evident to us that that was an important part of what we were trying to do. Um, and so we, you know, kind of committed to doing this every single week. And as you guys know, sometimes that can be a little bit difficult. Um, but, you know, we made the commitment, we put that expectation out there and we've done a pretty good job of sticking with it. And that's what's so amazing because the podcast took off right after that. And then, and then came episode fifty-five, Corey Kelly's show, Corey Kelly's podcast. Oh man! And then Tyson, yeah. and then it really took off from there. It was really crazy. So yeah, it's been. And we talked about that a bit when you were on last time. The man, that Corey Kelly episode. Every time I, I think about it, I've listened to it multiple times. Every time I listen to it, I get goosebumps. Like that was such a powerful episode. So if anybody that's tuning in has not listened to the episode of the Pickleball Kitchen that had Corey Kelly on it. You have got to listen to that. It was just amazing. And I just had him on. That was the show this week, actually, which was part two with him, episode 87. So so 55 and 87? 55 and 87, yeah. Yes, you definitely want to make sure you check out 55 first. Check out episode 55. Yes. Then listen to 87. Yeah. Um, you will not regret it. Uh, you might need to have some Kleenex close by if you listen to episode 55 because uh, it was a little bit of a tearjerker. Not going to lie. <laughs> It was. It was. And we were, you know, we record these in a, a fairly small room that we joke about um, with really funny art on the wall. And <laughs> I mean, the the emotion in yeah. the room when we were recording it was palpable. Yeah. I mean, it was just really um, sweet. It was intense. Um, and all three of us were, you know, in tears um, doing it. So it was really special. And we love, love, love Corey. Um, and he's just a really, you know, special guy. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah, that was that was an awesome episode, no doubt about it. And I listened to the one where he, uh, the most recent one that he was on with you, and uh, and he was talking about how much of an impact just being on your podcast has had on him, um, just because of the the great feedback he got from people. Um, Barrett, how does that make you feel? Just knowing that that your podcast had such an impact on somebody's life in such a positive way. Uh, it's pretty incredible. Um, it's really hard to hard to describe and I was kind of in shock really throughout some of that episode <laughs> because I just couldn't really I was like wow that's that's incredible you know um but it shows the power of you know speaking about the things that were essentially tormenting him right on a daily basis and not being sort of you know having that courage of of putting it so far out there that you don't know what's going to happen right and he did that. And I mean, it's incredible what's happened, really. And <laughs> yeah. I'm happy. I'm super happy. I'm super happy that I'm able to give him like a platform to, to speak on, really. Um, I think that's really important, you know. And I'm glad that so many people have, have reached out. I think he, he mentioned that a couple of times in the last episode that a ton of people have, have reached out to him for, for advice or, or for help or, or whatever. Um, so the fact that, I was able to give him a voice essentially uh, is, is amazing. It's hard to describe really. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, so one thing I've been wondering is uh, how, how often do you two play pickleball together these days? Do you get a chance to play together frequently or? Uh, yeah, I would say it kind of goes in spurts. Yeah. Um, so we live in slightly different parts of town and then, um, because of the, you know, the 
limited outdoor locations. They're a little bit more spread apart. And so I tend to go a different direction than he does. Um, but I would say we try to drill once every other week or so. Yeah. Um, and then I would say every other week we're in the same place playing. So yeah, and it's been a bit less recently just because of the the work I've been doing with my website, but I've been playing a lot more recently and typically we'll we'll uh we'll find each other every now and then, you know. So All right. What uh how are your skill levels compared to each other? Is one of you like uh definitely higher skilled or are you are you fairly on the the same page or same level? Um, I say in, in tournament play, Jana's on a, on a higher level than I am for sure. Um, I think Jana's, I think Jana, you're four five for the most part. Right. And I'm, I play mainly four Oh. Um, so I think Jana is, she's, well, you have way more tournament experience than I do too. Yeah. I've played in a few more tournaments and, yeah. uh, you know, quite frankly, I just play more than Barrett. So, yeah. um, you know, I, play again sometimes four or five six times in a week and Barrett doesn't get out quite that often um so I think I've just been able to play a little bit more um and then you know like I've said on the podcast I love to win so I just (laughs) fight 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 (laughs) and I don't really (laughs) unless it's a tournament then I do must beat Barrett just kidding I don't care Nice. Just kidding. Unless it's a tournament. Yeah. I go all out all the time when I play. So, you know, I'm I'm all in every time I get out there. <laughs> nice. That, <laughs> this that's is how truth. I am with- this is truth. <laughs> like I, I feel like uh ever since pickleball entered my life, I have become like a far more competitive person than I ever realized I was. I, I love winning. Unfortunately I don't don't win a lot, but but I love to win. And uh <laughs> so I'm constantly trying to get better. Um, and one kind of funny thing is people, a lot of people don't realize that Eddie and I live on opposite parts of the country. I'm in Michigan. He's down in Florida. So we've actually spent more time playing together during tournaments than we have rec play. So like we'll, we'll sign up for tournaments together. Uh, we won't have a chance to play rec play to practice with each other. Like sometimes we'll go months. Um, and then the first time we play together is our first game of a tournament. So, (laughs) and, uh, it really hasn't uh, worked out in our favor so far using that technique of not practicing at all uh, before tournaments. Uh, but we're getting there. We're both definitely improving. I mean, I feel like one of these days we're going to get a medal. I can just feel it. We're getting closer. Yeah. I, I definitely think that the styles of play, too, in Michigan versus down here in Naples are different. So typically, if we're going to show up at a tournament, I'm kind of used to one style of play. Uh I think Webby, you know, you're used to a little bit different of a style of play. And yeah, it just seems like when we try to come together for that tournament, it it hasn't hasn't worked out well in our favor. I think you and I both play better when we're with other partners than we do when we're together. Yeah. Oh, for sure. We absolutely do. <laughs> That's the truth. Yep. And uh, but like he Eddie gets to play a lot more than I do, and he's had a little bit more training, but I still feel like I could uh I should be able to beat him. Unfortunately, I haven't uh, haven't so far during any of our Eddie versus Webby matches, but I'm getting this close. I'm getting this close to doing it. The five-time <laughs> champion right here. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, I love it. <laughs> yeah. I love it. Well, and it's interesting. You talk about like the different styles of play because I've played, I have not played in the Michigan area, but I've played over in Naples and Florida, and there's definitely a little bit of a different um you know, it's very tennis heavy, um, Mm. you know, style of play. And, you know, of course we have tennis players here, but I think we have a lot, we have a really big variety of backgrounds, um, in the Dallas area. But when you get to Naples, it seems like lots of tennis players. Yeah, definitely quite a bit of tennis. And I, 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 I honestly think that up in the Michigan area, you get a lot of racquetball people, so down here, mm-hmm. you have a lot of people that yep. are doing, they're either driving and it's a low to high shot or it's the soft game and that's it. There's really not a whole lot of in between, right? Like Simone says, drop or drive, drop or drive. That's it. Yeah. I go up to Michigan and people are hitting wristy, wristy shots from three quarters of the way to the baseline that come flying at you. And you're all of a sudden, by the time you get your paddle out to block it, you're like, nobody in Naples would ever take that shot and it works on you and <laughs> right. you're like thrown off sometimes. And so I do think that where you are in the country and the background of 
any other racket sports that are kind of dominant in that area do does play a difference when it comes to pickleball. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we've we've done an episode about that actually, yeah. where we talked about the um the strengths strengths and weaknesses of like racquetball players, badminton, tennis, ping pong, um, and went Golfers. through all the yeah, a little bit of a little bit of golf <laughs> in there too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. So nice. I uh, got to give a shout out to to Leslie White. She's tuning in. She's a, a big fan of the show, and uh, she was actually our special guest referee in the most recent Eddie versus Webby match. Eddie versus Webby Part Five, which was our very first ever singles match. We've never done like a full blown full court singles match. We've done skinny singles, but this was our first time ever <laughs> doing a full blown singles match against each other. And man, that was oh, it was man. quite a battle. It was a it was a, a very good battle, and I feel like we both played the best we've ever played against each other. Yeah, definitely. I like, I like this idea from Jack. By the way, I got to get a shout out to to Jack here. He uh, he's been listening since I think pretty sure episode one. So I always have to give him props for uh, for listening for so long. Thank you, Jack. Oh man, that is. I, yeah, that is, I, I just saw that. That's a great idea. How about an Eddie and Webby idea. versus Jana and Barrett challenge match? Ooh, yeah, I, like I am at, oh, I'm I absolutely like down for that. Love it. Oh yeah, I, I that sounds great. What I'll, fun that would be. I'll put that on my I'll put that on my YouTube channel for sure. Let's do it. I think we need to make a trip to where Naples sounds like the best location for that. I agree. With, <laughs> I, I'm like five miles from East <laughs> Naples. We have. 40 some courts there now. I think I think we should set it up. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Wow. Yes. We we need well, to make I, this happen. This needs to happen. I agree. I'm down. I'm in. Well, and I uh, made a trip out to that area um at the end of last year. So it was like the day after Christmas and the forecast for the next four days was drizzle, rain, wind, oh. and 28 degrees. And so <laughs> I said I'm getting on a plane. Where should I go pickleball for him to play pickleball? And so I ended up in Florida and I landed in Fort Lauderdale and went and played over in Delray Beach um, and where the waters play and then went across to Naples and uh, played with my buddy Dominic Catalano. And then I went up to the coast a little bit from there to Marco Island and played in a little area there. So mm -hmm. Then I flew back home and it was awesome. So I remember that because she was like, she's like, I'm getting on a plane. So if we, we, we if we need to record, we need to do it today. <laughs> I'm leaving on a jet plane <laughs> yeah. right now. Just I ready to that. get out of there, huh? Nice. Yeah. Peace. Yeah. It, and it was fun. And of course, true to the pickleball community, like so many people were so welcoming, told me everywhere to go. And um, it was great. It was really, really lots of fun. So we've I'm talked gonna, to do we've, it again. We've talked about that before, you know, where people will literally will literally let you into their home and sleep in your house mm -hmm. because you play pickleball. That's the level that we've we've gotten to here. Pretty amazing. It's wild. Yeah. It's, it's wild. It's, it's wild. I mean, you know, lady I met said, you know, do you have you figured out where you're staying? And she said, We have a um, you know, kind of like a guest beat or a pool house thing and you're welcome to that if you want and then somebody else said i've got a, a vrbo that no one's in you're welcome to use that and so it's just i mean yeah. crazy That's never nuts. met me and just you know offered to welcome me into their home and so i think that's just that's really special um about pickleball special thing definitely yeah it's it's incredible that this community and it's it's crazy how it's you know you can relate to it so easily with other people and um it's crazy we actually have another question here for jana from suzanne merrifield she said so jana how many medals <laughs> <laughs> oh suzanne or z as we call her um I don't know how many medals I have, but I do think if you play pickleball, chances are you have a really big collection of medals, especially if you've played in, in um, you know, a number of tournaments. So I would say I've had um, everything from super exciting, you know, gold medal, you know, wins. I mean, I don't think I'll ever forget my, you know, four or five mixed gold medal. Um, and then I've had some real 
like disasters. Like I probably had four tournaments in a row this year where I went in, um, played two and was done which is never fun. <laughs> so no, I know, um, how, that goes. Had I know some... how that goes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I, I don't really, I need to go kind of count how many tournaments I've played in with, you know, versus medals. And, you know, I think, you know, if you've played in a lot of tournaments, you kind of know which medals are your special ones and which ones, you know, sometimes it lands, to be honest, where the way they combine brackets and break them up, sometimes you get a medal when there were only two teams in the whole bracket. Yeah. So sometimes those are like neat because you got it, but maybe it didn't feel like you really, really won or earned anything. So um, I've got a little bit of a hodgepodge of, of all of that. I'll nice. get the count to you later, Z. <laughs> yeah, we need to know the exact numbers, so make sure you please let us know <laughs> ASAP. <laughs> I threw away all the ones that are not gold. <laughs> Just kidding. Just kidding. But you know, oh, it's man. funny because some, some of the medals are like really cool. Like we have a tournament here. Um, and the medal is shaped like the state of Texas. And it's just a really nice looking, you know, medal. So there's some I love for, for that as well. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I really appreciate a good custom medal, like something that you can't get, like not a generic medal, because I think I have like five or six medals so far. And a couple of them are just like the, the generic pickleball medals that like you kind of see pretty regularly. Um so it's, I mean, it's still cool to win them, but I don't, I feel like I don't appreciate them quite as much, but then there's some such as the, uh, the beer city open medal that we have. Um, it's got the, the, the beer city logo from, from the city. And it's just, uh, it's something unique to that location. Um, stuff like that. I love, I love when they're customized like that. Well, the medals get attached to the experience that you had at the tournament. That's the thing. And that's the thing that I really like. Um, when, tournament directors change up the, des the design of the metal each year because then it looks differently and you can attach that look to a certain kind of memory, right? Yeah. So I have a metal, I have a metal, um, it's a, I think it's a bronze metal and it's, it, I didn't, that, I did not get bronze, right? I got last. We, we, <laughs> we it was terrible. But we, bronze out of three. There were three teams and we got bronze. <laughs> So when I look at it, I'm like, that's the worst bronze thing I've ever seen in my life. But I played in like 4-0, 5 combined uh, men's doubles, and we got bronze, like legit bronze. And so that medal means a lot more because it reminds me of how well we did that that day, right? Right. So oh yeah, that's the thing about that's the thing about medals. The medals are not. I think it's important not to look at the medals as just medals. But look at look at them at the experience that they reflect and that they remind yeah. you of, both negatively and positively, right? Because sometimes the medals aren't you know like those silvers, man. Those silvers are tough, right? Because you <laughs> lost the gold medal mat, so right. they can sometimes remind you of stuff of like you know, well, I did have that that those nerves that day or whatever, you know. Whereas the gold medal is you know I just triumphed that day and that was great, right? Oh, for sure. And so far, I've only actually earned two gold medals in my pickleball career. And um, one of them, like it was a very hard fought. Um, I love that medal because it just, I, mm -hmm. it was a, a very tough teams we played against. I'm very proud of it. And then the other gold medal that I have, it was uh, like the, a lot of the teams were kind of on the beginner side, it seemed like. It seemed like half of them were more decent, the other half kind of on the mm -hmm. beginner side. And it's like, I got gold. I dominated at that tournament, but like, eh, it's like, I don't feel quite as good about it just because like the level of the other teams, I almost felt like I was sandbagging, even though like I, I played my skill level and I was still fairly new to tournaments. So I, it was a three Oh tournament. Um, but I feel like a lot of the people like maybe were two fives or something like that. Like they, it was like, they're, they were like, Hey, I'm going to try doing a tournament for the first time ever. And yeah, they were still pretty yeah. new to pickleball. So it was like, I mean, I feel, I almost feel bad. Like, showing off this medal just because I feel like I was a little, I don't know. You know what I mean? <laughs> well, but, but don't be though. Right. Because that's, that's what helps inspire people to get better. Really? Yeah. I mean, like when they, when they see that, that, that kind of stuff, like, you know what, one day I'll have that medal. Yeah, that's true. 
<laughs> yeah, that's a good point. And I mean, at the time, I, I loved it. It was my first gold medal ever, and I liked rubbing it in uh, in Eddie's face because he hadn't won a gold medal <laughs> yet at that point. So he won a silver medal at that point, but not gold. So I felt really good about that. <laughs> that's awesome. Awesome. Well, and the whole, you know, when you kind of look over the, you know, kind of the the, the tournament journey thing, you know, I think one of the kind of the real things about what we're trying to do with the podcast. And I know what you all are trying to do is, you know, there's more people in this sport that are not pros, right? You know, there's just a, a massive number of people in the intermediate, low advanced range. And that's why we think, you know, there's such a big audience for this, these kind of conversations that we have, because that's like, just like you, you two, you know, we're kind of on the same journey and we can look back and I, the very first tournament I ever played in, I played singles. I had, I had the two experiences with pickleball that I told you about on the trips, one in Cabo and one in California. And then I had played maybe a month in the gym and this tournament was outdoor. And so I go to that tournament, signed up for singles and mixed doubles and and the singles part of it, out of 30 serves, probably, I'm just guessing, I got about six points. And those were the serves. I got a point when I actually got the serve in the court. <laughs> <laughs> so all of, all of the other, uh, you know, turnovers were because I literally could not serve the ball in the square. <laughs> oh, I know how that goes, too. I tell you, like, I think the last two tournaments I did were the first two tournaments that I didn't make a lot of serving errors. Um, they, but like, yeah. man, I just, the, the yips definitely have kicked in for me at tournaments big time when it comes to serving. Yeah. We're, we're going to be talking about the yips soon. Um, that's going to be a topic coming up very soon. I'm the poster child for yips. Luckily I am not. <laughs> and so I have a lot of, um, and it's, it's interesting because I, I, you know, I played a lot of golf growing up and I don't know that I really, I, di I didn't have them to the point where I would you know, I talked about it or thought about it, but I definitely have them in pickleball. And, you know, from that moment in time that I told you about at that first tournament to today, um, there, the instance of them is reduced greatly. And I've kind of learned some tricks and how to manage through them. Um, but it, it's definitely been a journey. And I've had, we've talked about him on the podcast before, and I've had people come up and, and say, I'm so glad you talked about that because I have them too. And it's embarrassing and I don't know what to do. And I will never forget, you know, in the second tournament I played in, it was in a gym and everyone is lined up in the bleachers like six feet away from the end of the court watching because that's where everybody's sitting all day and I did something similar and someone came up at the end and said I do not know how you have a smile on your face <laughs> after that you must be so stressed out and I said well I am deep down inside because that was the truth but you know it's like what could I do I mean it just was what it was and then over time I've learned to manage that and then, you know, the other reality is that the more tournaments that you play in, the the better you get at, you know, reducing the nerves and the anxiety. Um, and all these people that played in tennis tournaments all those years, you know, this is nothing new to them. So I don't think they have those kind of experiences like <laughs> the rest of us. Right. I mean, imagine, like, just to put it in perspective, imagine going on to a podcast for the very first time. If, if you've never done anything like that before, right? Oh man. Like for us, yeah. for us doing this right now, speaking like this with you guys is just an absolute breeze. But if you've never been on one, it's not like that. You know, it's the same way. And that's, that's why like I, I have people who like, they'll text me and say, Oh man, I, I, we did terribly in that tournament. And then I'll ask them, well, who was in your bracket? And then it's just like tennis player, tennis player, tennis player, tennis player, tennis player. Like, well, no wonder they've been playing tennis tournaments for like 30 <laughs> years. And that's right. really like really think about that for a second. Talking about people who have played competitive tennis tournaments for decades, decades. Right. Got to keep that in perspective, man. Oh, yeah. You know? Yeah, because so. I, I never growing up, I never did uh, sports or anything. I didn't do anything competitive. So doing tournaments in general was new to me. So like 
when I first started doing pickleball tournaments, man, I almost, I was sick to my stomach almost. I was so nervous because there was just mm-hmm. something yeah, I yeah. wasn't used to. And that's, that's a huge part of it. And, uh, uh, and like you said, with the podcast, like we, our previous episode was our 50th and I kid you not probably the first 40 to maybe even 45, I still got super nervous beforehand. I mean, obviously the first few were the worst. Um, the first couple, um, we didn't do them live, but I was still super nervous about doing them. And then our first live one, man, I was like, I, I kid you not, I had a, um, a little garbage can near me because I just wanted to make sure just in case I had to throw up, I didn't have to like run away to do so. <laughs> but uh, I mean, now it's definitely gotten a lot easier, but it took a while for me to to get used to just even doing this. Well, first of all, prop, grats on 50 and props on doing tournaments when you've had no tournament experience before, man. That's That's pretty extraordinary. Both of those. Yeah, awesome. Oh, thank you. And I think Go ahead. Sorry. No, go ahead. What were you going to say? Well, I was just going to say, I think, again, you know, when you look out at the, the, the big world of pickleball, there's a lot more people like what we're describing than we probably even imagine. And, you know, I've heard over and over again, and this is probably a little bit true for me too. You know, I was, you know, competitive and I always played things. Now I was never a you know, a collegiate athlete or anything like that. I just was always doing stuff and competing, you know, playing golf or, you know, if there was a, you know, softball game or a, you know, whatever, a volleyball game at church, you know, I was going to participate and play. Um, And so you kind of, as you get past a lot of those things, you know, pickleball for so many people is like a, a new chapter of an ability to compete and really kind of live out the, you know, the competitive inner, yeah. you know, soul and go out and, and try to achieve new things and challenge yourself. And I just, I love that. And I think that's what I see everywhere I go. Um, and I've, you know, been able to play in many different states now. And I, I just sort of see that, you know, here, and wherever there's people playing pickleball, I think that that truth exists. Oh, yeah, for sure. I don't think I can add anything to that. I think that's, I think that's <laughs> good. I, I know there's something I want to say, but I, it's not quite formed yet. I think that could be a good topic for another time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah there's something very, quite powerful about that, though. Oh, for sure. Yeah, very, very well said. Couldn't agree more. Um, and... Uh, I, uh, one thing I'm about to do, like, I finally, I just recently actually started liking tournaments because I did, I've done quite a few tournaments the last year and I kid you not after almost every single one, I was disappointed with how I played or, um, especially the ones where I didn't get a medal Mm -hmm. or anything. I was like, man, why, why do I even do this to myself? Like I, I get super nervous beforehand. (laughs) It's nowhere near as fun as rec play. Like why, why am I doing this? And then like about a, I, I tell myself, you know what, I'm just, I'm going to take a break from tournaments. I'm just going to do rec play because I have more fun there. But then like a week or two goes by and I'm like, huh, I wonder if there's any tournaments coming up. I'm going to see if there's anything I can sign up for. And like, I just, I can't help it. Like, I just can't help but go through it again. But the last couple I did, I actually enjoyed. I'm starting to finally see some real good progress with my playing ability. And uh, especially the most recent tournament that I did, even though I didn't win a medal, um, even when I go back and watch the footage of me playing, I'm actually kind of proud of how I did. And I'm like, man, I'm actually seeing progress. I think I can like, I think I can actually start competing uh, at, at a little higher level. I'm still officially a 3.0, but I earlier this year, I decided I'm just going to do 3.5 going forward until I feel I'm g- good enough to advance from there. And I, I feel like my, my skills are definitely going up faster by playing in the higher level uh, tournaments, even though I'm not officially that ranking yet. It just, it's definitely helping my gameplay. In my career. Oh, yeah, I will. Oh, yeah. When you play in that, you know, sometimes you have no choice but to play in a higher level. You know, like I'll, like I, you know, I, I'll play four or five every now and then if it's like a combined bracket or if I'm just playing with someone who just happens to be four or five. So I have to go up to four or five, right? And it's fine, but, you know, it's much harder, but it's so much more, you get, you get so much more experience out of it when oh, you yeah. play with people who just, who just slaughter you sometimes, you know. So right. it's good for you, but it's good for you in the long run. And that that's that's important is to to be careful of those short term emotions. 
of like, ah, well, this sucks. You know, <laughs> you got to think long term with this stuff. There's no instant gratification. It takes a long time for this stuff to, to develop. Oh, yeah, and sure. I think I've I've kind of had that same, you know, love hate yeah cycle with the tournament thing too. Yeah. Um, and you know, I think especially earlier this year, I had done, um, you know, it just kind of went to areas that, you know, you you kind of add a tournament nerves already. You go to a new state you know, you're playing around people you've never seen before. It it added a lot of stress to the whole tournament process. And I it was hard for me to enjoy it, but it was also a good part of the journey, right? Because I think, you know, the more you do that and you put yourself out there and you try it, you know, you might walk away and say, you know what, I don't think that is for me ever again. Uh, but then sometimes you walk away and go, okay, that was not bad. I think I could do that again. And then you, you kind of start to learn, you know, what is going to set you up for the most success, both in just how you're going to play and how you're going to feel when you're done. And I think that's oh, yeah. kind of constantly evolving and, you know, every tournament I've played in, I mean, I've, you know, I've had a few where I've just been like, that was yeah, I don't ever want to do that again. And then I'll go, like you said, try it again. And then I'll have a really great, you know, fun success. Um, and then like, okay, I survived both of those. And, mm -hmm. you know, I know which one I liked better. So how do I make that happen <laughs> next time? And, and, you know, we're all doing this as, as adults now, right? We're not little kids where <laughs> this stuff just, it just, it's, they just assimilate it so easily and it's no problem, right? right. We're having to do this manually, you know? Oh, it's yeah. going to take a little bit more time. Yeah, definitely. Um, so uh, talk, speaking of my most recent tournament, uh, we were kind of talking about this a little bit before we went live. Um, I experienced something for the first time during this most recent tournament, and that was a, a bad line call, or at least in my mind, it was a very bad mm. line call. And it was, uh, we, were in the, uh, we were in the loser's bracket, um, we had just defeated and eliminated uh, the team before, and we were in the next round of the losers bracket. And whoever won this match would go on to the bronze medal match, so that would have meant uh, guaranteed at least bronze medal. So we played the team, and it's, this was the team that had originally defeated us in the uh, the first round of the tournament. So we had our rematch against them. They they took an early lead. But then we started making a comeback, and it was uh, it was pretty it was an awesome match. It was by far the most intense back and forth match I've ever been part of. Um, it it was one game to fifteen, like a lot of uh, losers bracket matches are. And it uh, at one point the score was uh, seventeen to sixteen. They were winning. Wow. <laughs> yep, seventeen sixteen. They were winning. They served it. We had a really good rally. It went back and forth quite a bit. My partner hit this really awesome cross-court shot. It hits the net and kind of makes it deflect up a little bit and it lands down and it caught the edge of the line. The other team called it out. And uh, like, I'm, I'm not the type that will challenge a line call unless I am like very sure that it was uh, like a bad call. So I was like, no, 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 that, that was on the line. Ref, did you see that? Of course, the ref said, sorry, I, I didn't get a good enough look. I can't overturn the call. And like, I, this was the first time I've ever gotten really upset. And I was like, dude, are you serious? Are you really going to call this out? That was on the line. Like it was granted. It was like on the far edge of the line. It wasn't like on the inner part. It wasn't in the center. It was on the outer part, but it was definitely overlapping the line. There was no, uh, no space in between. I am very confident that the ball was out and, uh, they, uh, they said they saw it out. There was nothing really we could do about it and game over. The game ended with that call, that call left a very bad taste in my mouth because that was like it was the best tournament match I've ever been part of. Just as far as how back and forth it was, we had great rallies. I loved the match, and then that's the way it ended. Like I just it left a very bad taste in my mouth, and that's the first time I've ever been kind of angry towards the other team after the match. I mean, we did the paddle taps, but I did a little kind of an angry paddle tap. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, have you guys ever had to? Have you guys ever dealt with anything like that during a tournament? I've never dealt with something like that where you lose the game on a bad line call. I have never dealt with something like that because that's where things get tricky. 
right? Because it's like, was that really an accident? Question mark, right? right? <laughs> right. Nice point. Uh, I've never done, dealt something like that. I have dealt with bad line calls, of course. Um, some people just, it's like really bad calls where it's obviously that they're doing it on a purpose, right? Um, here's the thing, though, is that you have a, you have a, a couple of options. You ask them, you ask the opponent, hey, man, I th- like that was in, wasn't it? You know, and if they don't say anything, which typically they don't say anything, you ask right. the ref, say, ref, did you see that? If they say no, you have to snap decision, let it go, and reset. If you don't reset, you're going to carry that stuff into the next point, and you're probably going to lose the next point. Because, look, oh, yeah. like in terms of the rules, nothing that can be done about that situation. Absolutely nothing. So you really have to have the mental agility to just, and I know it's hard, right? To let it go. Of course it's hard to let it go, right? Right. It's, it's oh, difficult. Yeah. You have to, you have to, you have to reset. Cause that point, that point starting in like five seconds, like there's no time. There's no, is it in tennis where you go like grab your towel and you know, that kind of stuff, right? It's, it's point <laughs> I'm sure starting. the tennis people will appreciate that. Well, you, <laughs> you, you have so you watch, much time. <laughs> you watch pro, you watch the, sorry, I don't mean it that way, but. You know, you watch the the pro tennis stuff, and they they have time to like grab their towel and you know do uh, get the get the certain tennis balls and stuff like that. Pickleball is very fast, so if you're not willing, if you're not ready to move on to that next point, then you're probably going to lose the, the 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 you know the match. Really, I mean, it can really turn the match. That kind of stuff. So like, you kind of oh, have yeah. to ask yourself: Would you rather lose one point over a bad line call or lose three over dreading it? Right. Oh, for sure. And I've seen that That's happen before. I, I know some oh, people that are a bit on the hot headed side and they get so oh, yeah. angry. Um, and they, yeah, like, like you said, they can't let it go. They're so angry about it. And then it just ruins their gameplay for the rest of the match or at least the next few points. Um, so yeah, I absolutely agree. You have to, even if it, bad call or not, you got to be able to get over it for sure. Yeah. And in your case, I mean, there's, I mean, that's like the ultimate, just that's, that's the worst oh, yeah that's man. one you're gonna carry in your soul for a while right yeah yeah, yeah like i go but through I, phases i go through phases where i'm like okay i'm it's fine like maybe maybe i was wrong but then i'm like you know what no i was i was not wrong they, <laughs> they must they cheated us out of the, they cheated us out of that match <laughs> yeah yeah i i have not had that kind of you know drama um in a end of a match and I don't think I've really been in a match where we, we, I had anything in a tournament that, that carried on or if I did, clearly I've forgotten it at this point, but I have watched matches where, you know, I've seen what you're just, you know, what we're describing where, um, and there's some, there are some people, I mean, I'm a very, um, you know, as I've described on the, on the podcast many times, I am very, uh, I don't know what the right word is. Describe it. Passionate. <laughs> okay. I will. I get very worked up about my own play. Like if I make a mistake, I you know I'm very difficult. I'm hard on myself. Um, but I've seen people in matches just like go crazy on every single point conversion on every single shot, and it just is like, what in the world is that? Um, but you know, it, it hasn't really happened to me, um, in it with people I've played, thank goodness. I've heard ladies scream, like literally <laughs> scream and it's sort of like shocking, you know, but that's, that's just how some people are. I'm not like that at yeah. all, but whatever, man. <laughs> whatever. Yeah. I know people yeah. that, uh, they'll, they'll throw their paddle. Uh, they'll get very worked up about stuff like that. I, for the most part, I'm, I'm very lighthearted when it comes to that stuff um and like i said that that was the only time i've ever gotten upset over over a bad line call because usually i'm able to just brush it off but like after like we we played our hearts out in that match and i i like i don't think they did it intentionally i I don't think they intentionally made a bad line call i think in their mind it really was out but man that that's the first time like i didn't even ask him i wasn't like are you sure that wasn't out? I was like, no, 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 no. That that was on the line, man. <laughs> that, that was on the line. And uh, yeah, yeah was, and, and you're supposed to just call those in. That, that's the problem, you know. And especially if it's a, if it's like a match point like that where your call literally calls the game. You know, if there's any doubt, like you gotta you gotta call those in. You know. Yeah, and that's and that's like part it, of the integrity the integrity part of the sport. You know. 
Oh, for sure. And there's been many times where like I'll go back and watch footage um, where I'll I'll play a ball that like at the, in even in the moment like I thought it might have been out, but like I was like, man, I just, I don't know for sure if it was out. I'm just gonna keep it going. I'm not gonna call it out. Let's keep it going. Let's keep this rally going. Um, and then I watched the footage and it was like two or three inches out when I should have called it out. But like, it just like, yeah, when it's, when it's close like that, like, man, you just, yeah, I feel like you got to call it in. Just keep it going. I, I wonder if there's a good line calls video on YouTube that we could watch. <laughs> yeah, I wonder. <laughs> <laughs> well, hmm. if only, well, and, if wink, only, wink. yeah, <laughs> well, and, and I will say what's, what's, I think I've seen more um, and I saw this at the U S open and I saw it at a, a regional tournament here and, um, one more somewhere else. I don't know if I was at the Atlanta open maybe, but where the, um, opposing team, the line judge in a metal match called a ball out and the team that was, would have benefited from the out call said, no, 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 no. That call with that ball was in. Yeah. And um, so I think that's a really respectable handling of, you know, kind of where this can get funny when we don't, there's, you know, it, it is tricky with a pickleball because they don't compress, you know, a ball on the edge is technically out because there's less than a size of a dime where it makes impact, right? But the human eye can't see that when everything is moving quickly. So you, we have to, you know, trust what we could see in that moment. And, you know, I think it was really neat. Um, and again, these were one of them, two of them were professional level. And then um, one was 5-0. And they made that call um, that, you know, kind of went against them and said, no, that was that was wrong. That ball was in. Yeah. And it's great. It's great to see that kind of yeah. stuff. Oh, Yeah. For sure. And uh, as far as that call I was talking about, I, th I feel like uh, another thing that made it sting extra bad is that it would have been side out had the ball been ruled on the line oh. and inbounds. If, if it would have been the first server, I could have maybe been like, okay, they, I mean, let's say that was a bad call. They would have had another serve. They usually could have gotten game point. So maybe we still would have lost, but it would have been side out. So who knows what would have happened. So it's just, uh, I'll stop talking about it because I don't want to get riled up anymore. <laughs> 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 But um, no problem. Yeah, it's just uh, it, uh, yeah. yeah, it's a bummer. It's an unfortunate way for a great match to end, but it happens. I know it happens. I'll get over it, and maybe it'll just fuel my fire, and I'll just. That's right. That's right. Or, like, I'll bet, I'm just better, everybody that plays me in the next tournament just better watch out. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be watching you. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! So man, time is flying by. I've got so many other things I want to talk about here, but I don't want to take up too much more of your time. Uh, one thing I definitely want to talk about, though, uh, Barrett, you were kind of talking about how there maybe there's a YouTube video out there about bad line calls. Uh, for anybody that isn't familiar. There is an awesome YouTube channel uh, called the Pickleball Kitchen uh, YouTube channel with amazing really? videos on all kinds of stuff. I'm not. Have you ever heard of that one, Barrett? <laughs> I, I have, have never heard, heard, of heard of that YouTube channel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, new no, new slash breaking news. <laughs> new, yeah. new to me. But no, so Barrett, is that fake news? Barrett, <laughs> fake news. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but now Barrett has a, a great YouTube channel. If anybody listening. Uh, has never checked it out. You've definitely got to check it out. One of your videos, uh, it's a fairly recent one that you did that I absolutely love, is how to avoid popping the ball up because that is something I still struggle with. And uh, yeah. it's uh, a lot of great tips in there that people should watch. Um, what uh, Since the last time you were on the show, are there any specific videos that uh, that you've done that like that you are super proud of or that you want to point oh, out man. or anything? Well, I don't know where I was when I last came on. Do you remember when that was, was, by the way? Yep, I checked before the show. It was in March. March of this year is when you were okay. on last time. Yeah, the YouTube the YouTube channel has exploded since then. Uh, the YouTube channel is about, in terms of like, just the audience size, it's like 25 times bigger than the podcast. I mean, it's, it's oh, wow. massive. Yeah, so um, the YouTube has done very, very well. And it really shows how how dedicated people are to getting better i mean really like people <laughs> oh, yeah. love the sport and they want to get better and like we've t we just talked about how there's you know a lot of people in that sort of 3-0 kind of area and really i think there's actually more people in like just the absolute complete beginner area 
because my most popular videos and the one that I'm most proud of is my top 10 beginner mistakes video that's updated for 2019. So I made one about a year and a half ago, um, but I didn't put footage in it for some reason. And I got a lot of flack. What a compelling video. Yeah, I got a lot of flack (laughs) for it, understandably. People were like, why didn't you put any footage in it? It was just me talking in front of a wall. I was, like, I was in like podcast mode. There was some footage. There was some footage, but. A live-ish podcast. I quickly, yeah, exactly. Video cast. Pretty much was. I quickly <laughs> learned the error of my ways and I got a new mic system and I made a video um, about the top 10 most common beginner mistakes. It's got like 140,000 views right now. Wow. It's really helps people understand this kind of stuff that we, I don't want to be forgotten about it. You know, like we don't like we've we've passed that area, you know, so I understand I understand I deeply understand the troubles that people have with pickleball. Like I get it. Like I get it on a visceral, deep, down to earth level. I've got it. Like I I was in your boat. In some cases, I'm still in your boat. And that's we, we how have, I that's we, how I produce my videos, basically. Yeah, we have the scar tissue. Yeah, that's a great way to put it. Yeah, that we we care we're carrying forward, and we're yeah. we're trying to um, help everyone on this journey um, with just you know things like that, and then just the things that we talk about because there are still so many new people coming into the sport. Um, and there's still so many people that are trying to get better every day, and they're just searching for. Um, I think moral support <laughs> yeah, kind of, and yeah. just, you know, um, information about, you know, just little things that they can do. And, and, and that's, that's not a fun. guess, by the way, like I've got the ana- analytics, I've got the data to back up all that. Like I know exactly what's going on when it comes to what people are searching for. And a lot of it is just kind of like the basic, the basic stuff. Like there is a whole wave of people who are getting into the sport right now. And we may not see that like see where that kind of ends up until later on until maybe a few years down the line. But man, it's crazy. It's crazy. How many people (laughs) are on YouTube searching for pickleball stuff? Oh yeah. It's I know I'm I'm on it constantly. Like, uh, like we have our own YouTube channel, but we don't have like, like, uh, we have a few training videos. Eddie's been doing some stuff, uh, project 4.0 with, uh, Tony from into pickle, um, some great stuff there, but it's just, it's amazing how much great content there is out there. So, uh, it's it's great for beginners to be able to pick up great tips. Uh, your channel has amazing content. Um, Thank you. One thing else, another thing I want to talk about though is your website, pickleballkitchen.com. Uh, if mm-hmm. I understand correctly, you actually went through a major redesign of mm-hmm. your website. Is that right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. I was went that, into a cave was for three months. <laughs> why, why don't you Why don't you talk about it, Jenna? <laughs> yeah. Three <laughs> months later, dot dot dot. We saw Barrett again. <laughs> so. Bless his heart. He worked round the clock, um, you know, coding and writing and designing and, you know, belaboring over every great detail. And so um, he just really kind of went on about a three month, um, you know, disappearing act. Yeah, it was about 10 weeks. It was it was great, though, because I was also injured. So it was like the perfect timing. You know, I had this little like I had this like horrible kind of twinge behind my knee, like kind of where my, uh, where like the calf, like kind of like the top of the calf on the very back of my knee. And it was, it was really annoying. And I, so I couldn't play, I couldn't play. Like I I was afraid of injuring it. So I thought, Hmm, you know, I've had that website redesign project for a while. And the next day I decided to, to, to push the button and and do it. it took about 10 weeks to do. Um, and so the thing is though, is that when I started, when I started the blog and, uh, early 2017, it was just a blog. It was literally just a WordPress site with like a theme on it and random pages attached to it or stuff. It didn't really, didn't really look like a website. Like the blog was like the homepage and it just wasn't, I knew it was, it was useful and everything, but it didn't really have like a lot of personality. So I hired a photographer. We went and took a bunch of pictures of me in like the studio and then out playing pickleball and stuff and we took pictures of us actually just downstairs in this place with podcasts for the for the podcast and stuff and i created a bunch of different sections based on certain areas of pickleball so like for dinking it's pickleballkitchen.com slash dinking i uh, explain a lot about dinking and then i've got my content organized based on dinking so like there's like, there's like this grid of content and you can pick whatever you want when it comes to dinking and i've got third shot 
improvement, control and finesse, mindset and strategy. So redesigned the whole thing. Took a long time. Um, I like didn't go outside. <laughs> <laughs> like it was, it was, it was, I had to, I had to do it though. I had to do it. Like it had to be done. I sacrificed my summer to do it. That's what you have to do in this world when you're a content creator. You know, you have to sacrifice things and that was one of them. Oh yeah. Yep, absolutely. And uh, yeah, I, I know, uh, at least I know a portion of the uh, the hard work that you went through. I was part of the uh, the the testers group that you had. You had people that were testing it as you went, which I appreciate. Yeah. I love the fact that you like kind of recruited people as you went. To, you got you got feedback. You got real world, world feedback. Yeah. And uh, I, I loved the uh, the process that you took to to do that, and it was cool to see was how things progressed so as helpful. you went through. It was so helpful, yeah. Because yeah, we, we talk about this, and we talked about this before. Jenna is mm-hmm. like when you play pickleball, you only have one set of of eyes. You can't see yourself playing, right? That's oh, why yeah. we. This is why we talk about video all the time. You got to video yourself so that you can have that second pair of eyes that watch you. Yeah. So having testers. For the website was that like 50 however many people pair of eyes that were able to watch me so i'm super grateful for all those people that was so helpful so useful um and uh, i'll be making those t-shirts soon i promise <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I only did that so i could get that free t-shirt no I'm just <laughs> it's coming it's coming but uh but no, great work, man. The, the website looks great. And if anybody has never checked out pickleballkitchen.com, you've got to check it out. It's just, it's the amount of uh, knowledge you can learn from there is pretty amazing. It's got all of Barrett's blogs, every YouTube video he's done. Um, it's got all the, you can get to his, access his podcast episodes. Um, it's just, man, it's it's amazing the amount of content on there and the, uh, the redesign you did looks great. So Anybody listening Thank that's you. never done so, do yourself a favor. Check out the website. It's it's great. You won't regret it. <laughs> Thanks. Oh man, this uh, this has been such a fun night. I I can't thank you guys enough for uh, for joining us. There's absolutely uh, we we could easily speak for hours about just the one topic. Oh, yeah. I mean, there's so many <laughs> so many other things to talk about. That's just the great thing about pickleball. Like it doesn't matter. Like I, I can meet somebody for the first time if I know they're a pickleball player. We're instantly friends. We could talk for hours, and uh, it's just it's another one of the the just an, more proof how amazing this game is, and just how life changing. And it's just yeah, I, I love this game. I, I love everything about it. <laughs> we have we have so I think we have some more time. We can do some rapid fire questions, or if anyone has any questions, we can do that if you want. Yeah, whatever you we want. do it. Eddie, I don't sure. know if there's uh, any any current questions going on, or if you have anything for them. I, f- I say we just let's do like a little rapid fire round, and uh, before we wrap things up. Well, there was one topic actually, and and I wanted to expound on it when you guys were talking about kind of the whole um, out calls and and not being able to let it go, and how that can mentally destruct your game. Uh, kind of interesting. This past weekend, I live streamed and played in a beat the buzzer tournament here at Pickleball in Tennis U.S. in Benita Springs. And Fun. That sounds it, awesome. It, it was super cool. It was eight minute timed matches, as many points as you can get in eight minutes. And it was rally scoring, right? And with rally scoring, things can get confusing where you need to stand, right? Because if you're on the receiving team and you score a point, you got to switch sides. And that's not something that most of us are used to. We're only used to having to switch sides when we're on the serving team. So, anyway. Long story short, I'm sure you guys can imagine that led to a lot of faults. Our referees oh, were yeah. very, very busy, you know, calling faults. Uh, we had Julie and Larry Scott. Uh, we had, um, uh, let's see, we had Hollywood Hostler out there, right? And so, you know, it was it, it there. There was there was a lot of faults called, and they were very busy, kind of keeping everybody in line with it. But what was bizarre to me was, first of all. When Julie Scott makes a call, you don't argue with her. It's Julie Scott. You just, you, you accept it, move on, right? Um, but secondly, they were spending 20, 30 seconds arguing about a call when it's like you could have scored two points in that 30 seconds that you were arguing about the one point that was against you. Just get in position, serve, and let's go. And that kind of goes into what you guys were talking about a little mm-hmm. bit, that mental side of it where you can self-destruct. And do you, do you guys see that often, you know, that kind of mentality of where it's like, mm, I can't let go of this and it's going to definitely alter my game? 
So yes, and that's why you have to have a good partner. Yeah, that's what I was about to say yeah. too. Yeah. Okay. If you if you have that tendency, um, you know, I don't tend to get wrapped up in that stuff. I do get a little bit more, you know, um, focused on what I've done wrong, and I can kind of get frustrated with myself that might, you know, um, cascade into you know a couple of other points that partner in either case and you know sometimes it's mutual um you know i've played with people that get pretty quickly fired up about a call and it's like stop stop no let's move on it's done it's over let's go and then conversely i'll be the person that's like oh why did i miss that you idiot jana Mm -hmm. you know and then i need that person saying okay come on you got this you know shake it off let's go um and so but i think i do think the partner piece of it is huge you see the pros doing this all the time like all the time they're constantly talking to each other Mm -hmm. you know and and trying to keep them from getting to that point right because there's like a there's a there's a ledge that you go down right where you go into like an area of psychology that you just don't want to go to where you Mm -hmm. totally self-destruct that's what the whole come on man come on hey you got this you got this that's where all that's what all that is for yeah right so if you have a good partner and if you're open with that partner then you're going to know each other's tendencies like Jana said and then you're going to stop that track from progressing yeah that's that's the trick but what that requires though is that you have to be honest with your partner yeah you got to be open about that stuff like my for the texas open my partner talked to me about how he gets a, a little nervous sometimes You know, and then I told him like, yeah, I get nervous and and metal matches like big time, Mm -hmm. (laughs) you know, it was great, which is great. So now we know each other, right? A little bit more. And so now when those things come up, we have a strategy again, that's snap. You got to snap and you got to make those decisions on the court. So yeah, it's all about your partner in those cases. Well, here, and here's kind of the, the rapid fire question that goes exactly along with that. What are the words you like to hear? And are there any trigger words that when your partner says it just pisses you off? <laughs> uh, I have a YouTube channel, so comments don't bother me anymore. <laughs> <laughs> He's developed some thick skin. Yeah. yeah. I got one yesterday that said, you suck. So, uh, yeah, I don't. <laughs> so creative, whoever yeah, no, you are. Yeah. No capitalization and no punctuation either. Oh. Just just classic. But, you know, words don't, <laughs> words don't bother me. But, um, you know... I think the big thing is just communication. Yeah. I don't think it matters what it is. You got to keep that bridge alive between the two people. Silence is the worst thing you can hear on the court. Mm -hmm. Whenever I see a team losing, especially if if the, the, the players know me or I've taught them or something, you know, if I see silence, I know they're losing. So I'll go up to them and be like, you better get talking or you're going to lose. Mm Mm-hmm. It's just that communication. Just create yeah. that bridge. Let that bridge be there. Whatever is said is said. It doesn't matter. You say, come on, hey, we got this. That's fine. That, that, that's fine. You could say, hey, I like laundry on uh, Thursday morning. That's fine. <laughs> just, just whatever. <laughs> just say something. Hey, would you like a grapefruit? It doesn't right. matter what it is. Just yeah. keep that communication going right. so that you know that they're there. Right? Silence is like the silence is like this, this like passive judgment. It yeah. sort of feels like passive judgment sometimes, right? So if you take that out of the equation, then you both know that you have each other's backs. Yeah, okay. and I think too, once you, it's, I kind of have said this before and, you know, some professional coaching type environments as well, but it's kind of like know thyself. So you need to know who you are and how you um, want to work with someone so that you can tell someone, Hey, this is what happens to me when I get into a tournament. Or if you see this going on, I need you to help me in this way. And so I've gotten better at those kind of things as well. And, and I think it does help when you're, you know, lucky enough to get to play with the same person over and over and over again, you just kind of learn those things and you know them. Um, but if you don't, which I think is more of the world out there. And you're, you might be playing with sometimes people you don't even know, you know, you need to be able to communicate, you know, Hey, this is kind of who I am. And, and if, and for me, honestly, just complete transparency, I might even have to say, look, I might say something that sounds a little sharp, but it's not about you. It's about me. So don't be upset if, because when I get in the heat of that match and, 
really in particular, it's all self weight. Like, oh my gosh, they missed that shot. It wasn't because they missed it. It's because what did I do before that that I could have done better? Mm -hmm. So I'm constantly thinking like that. So I will get really, you know, wrapped up in that. And, you know, and I always sometimes, well, sometimes I even have to say afterwards, like, hey, I know I was got a little bit excited about that, but that wasn't about you. That was about me. Honestly, I think that if you're playing with someone you've never played before in a tournament, I think discussing your mental game rather than your pickleball game is going to be more beneficial in the long run. Like as long as you're on a general same skill level, you can do the how you play stuff later, like when you're yeah. warming up and stuff. Like that's the easy part. The hard part is the communication. The hard part is being yeah. a partner. Yeah, I definitely agree. I Even last night I was playing rec play over at East Naples. And I have a tendency that when my partner misses a drop shot, goes out of bounds, I want to just kind of like diffuse it. And I'm like, hey, it's all good. Don't worry about it. Like you got this. And after the third or fourth time that I did that to the guy I was playing with yesterday, he got very upset and he was like, it's not all good. I'm missing my <laughs> shots. And then I was like, well, listen, man, there's nothing I can help you with then because I'm trying to calm <laughs> you down. And if like, if you're going to be that upset with yourself, then all right, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to keep trying. Like you go ahead and be mad. We'll move on. And so that, I think that was a, that was almost a trigger for him. It, it almost made it worse. And so I think if we would have, like you said, if we would have had that discussion beforehand, he probably would have been, you know, more like, I don't need words of encouragement. I'm just going to work through it. <laughs> and it's like, yeah, don't give right. me positive affirmations. Right. So does, that sound like, does that sound like me? Does that sound like me? What? Like, you know, it's all right, dude. Like no biggie. Oh, I don't know. I mean, I was thinking I might have said what that guy said. Really? <laughs> uh, yes, for sure. <laughs> Do not encourage bad behavior. I do oh. not deserve positivity. <laughs> um, no, and again, it's it's always a it's just kind of what's uh, you know going on and the frustration. If I've missed something like that, like four drops in a row, row, you know, I know bless someone's heart if they're trying to encourage me and say, you know, that's okay, good try. It's like it wasn't a good try. Okay. That was horrible. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. It happens. You see it out there a lot. And yeah, I, yeah. I will tell you there, there's one there. I have one trigger. Uh, and that's when I'm playing. Cause sometimes when I, I, I start to play a little tight, um, uh -huh. and, and I, you know, it, I, one of my partners I play with down here, Mark, he's really good at being like, Hey man, it's all good. You got, you know, calm down. You're good. And, and it helps me kind of soothe. But when I play with some other people who are like calm down it's like yeah let me just flip that switch it's easy for me like that that that's a trigger for me like i'm not i'm not yeah. trying to play tight i'm not intending to do this and so right you know, i wish i was a little more like you barrett where it's like that that wouldn't get to me but that one does because it's like i'm not i'm not doing this intentionally here it's it's right. a nerve it's it's my expression of my nervous energy in my play and if you think that that comment's helping it's not so Stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I, I love it when people yell, calm down. Right. That's always uh, slightly funny. <laughs> yeah. It's like, yeah, that's really Everybody calming. calm down. Right. Calm, yeah. You hey, man, need to calm you down. You need right to now. calm <laughs> down. <laughs> yeah. 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 And it's like, oh, too bad I didn't know about that sooner in all of this. Maybe I could have been a much better player if someone had just thought to tell me to calm down. <laughs> right. <laughs> but so oh. you. So you, you see how important this topic is, right? Because we're sitting here discussing tournament partners and we're talking about the social stuff and not the technical stuff. Yeah. Sure. Yep. hundred percent. It shows you right there how important yeah. that stuff is. Oh yeah, absolutely. That's funny. Oh. So one thing I, I love about your podcast is like you guys, you have a great mixture. Like there's, there's episodes where it's just, it feels like it's just the two of you talking about whatever topic um, sometimes you have interviews with people such as Corey Kelly. And then uh, recently, Jana, you interviewed Taylor Taylor, and that was on your own. Uh, that was the first episode you've ever done on your own, isn't it? Yes, it was. It was super fun. I loved it. That was fun. Nice. Do. Yeah. And it Taylor was, fun was too, uh... yeah, she was great. And it was super easy. And, you know, I think it's, you know, it was just like having a great conversation with a great friend and it was a great subject too and i think um that was what was really so fun about it is that you know i feel like we see like little glimpses of great community work that is starting to 
you know, be facilitated because of pickleball, um, you know, things at schools, um, you know, just and you know, kind of what uh, Taylor was was talking about. Um, I think that's really a tremendous upside that we'll see more of in the sport um, where we can use it to connect um, with other, you know, community based opportunities um, to help people. And I think that's wonderful. Oh, for sure. Absolutely. Yeah, and that, I, I love that you two. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Well, that, that was that was a really cool one just because it was, you know, that first of all, first one with just Jana and not me. Right. So that was <laughs> I, I felt like a, I felt like a, a parent who like just dropped off their their kids at soccer practice because I like <laughs> I like I'll say, OK, Jana, here's what you do. You know, yeah, and I hit the record <laughs> button. And I shut the door and I I just sat out on the couch on my phone and just kind of sat, sat there and waited for like an hour. It was, no, it was he was day. really thinking like, oh my gosh, I've left Jana alone with the microphone. <laughs> yes, and the What's computer <laughs> and the mixer board. And Ooh. I'm like, what if she does this? What? How, how much did you have that? to edit out of that episode? Actually, not that much. Okay. Not, not that right. much. That's there, there were a couple of things like uh, the outro music started playing. <laughs> That was really funny. Yeah, he didn't tell me that. Yeah, the ending music was just going to start on a timer, so we were still gabbing along right past the <laughs> end of the time we were supposed to, yeah. and the music started playing, and so we were like, "Uh." No, but it was good. It was it was yeah. it was a great episode. That's that was a great cool. episode. Yeah. Yeah, it was fun. But that kind of reminds me the outro music playing. It kind of reminds me recently Eddie figured out a way to give me control of like which camera angle we use and like different media content. And so the previous episode number fifty with Simone, um, in the middle of her talking, I clicked the wrong thing, and all of a sudden it cuts to our intro, like the video and the music, like right in the middle of her talking. So I'm like, dang it! Yeah, I finally get control Shoot. of the buttons and I mess it up. <laughs> you had up. one job. You had one you job. Had one job. job. <laughs> <laughs> oh man how fun was it to interview her i love her i think just i oh, love man. watching her play her, her she's just a beast and i think it's super inspiring to um watch her and listen to her talk about the sport because she's just really great yeah yeah we're very lucky to be able to have her on and um, i don't know if you guys know this or not but her and i working together on her YouTube channel. We just launched it about five weeks ago. And so it's been so much fun getting an opportunity to be able to work with her and, and film That's a lot awesome. of that. Like she's just, she like the first time I met her, cool. I was super nervous. Like, Oh my God, it's Simona, you know? And I was all hyped. Right. Up. And then you get to meet her and she's so down to earth and so caring yeah. and so giving and she just loves the sport, but she's also kind of like a badass too. And yeah, yeah. you know, and I, right. I don't know if you guys got a chance to see her or not, but I posted a video a couple of weeks ago of me getting a chance to play with her. And one of the main reasons I wanted to post that video, first of all, I just wanted to brag that I got a chance to play with her. because Yeah, no kidding. Sure. Um, that's worthy for sure. It, so, yeah, it was awesome. But because she's so much fun on the court during that social rec play and she's funny and goofy and was dancing and singing and she was talking trash the whole time. And it was just, <laughs> it was awesome. it, it was a side of her that a lot of people didn't get to see. And so uh, I, I, I really wanted to post that video mainly because I was like, somebody, people got to see this side of you because a lot of people don't see it. They see her when, when she's in tournament mode and that's a very different yeah. Simone than the mom oh, yeah. and the friend and just the person that's out there, you know, living in this world. Well, and that's what I love about what you guys do as Eddie and Webby is you guys really get into that cultural side of things the social side of stuff you know like we're responsible for you know teaching people about stuff but you guys get into like the nitty-gritty of of the people side of things and that's just it's awesome you know we need to hear that stuff we need to see that that kind of stuff you know well thank you that's that's what we try and do that's like with you guys you know we want to we want to get to know you guys and dig deeper into yeah. who you are in addition to you know what you guys do in the pickleball world for sure yeah yeah, we love getting a mix of like getting knowledge from people, but then at the same time, like finding out like what what do you do outside of pickleball and stuff like that. And yeah. it's it's just yeah, it's a side people a lot of people don't get to see. And when Simone was on, that was awesome because I learned a lot that I didn't know about. And I recently got to meet her in person for the first time at the Beer City Open in Grand Rapids, Michigan. And such a nice, down to earth, fun person. And uh, and she did 
uh, did a little cameo appearance in our music video for Pickleball for Life. And she, she was just like, I just, all I said was like, oh yeah, this, this is the line I want you to say, uh, just put some, um, like do, just do whatever you want with it. And then she just had so much energy with it. And, uh, she gave like this hilarious, awesome, like hardcore thuggish performance. And it, it was great. I loved it. That's awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, when we figure out the internet, the internet interview stuff, we'll uh, ho- hopefully one day we'll be able to get her on. That would be so cool. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm a kind of. It's kind of a, you know, who I want to be kind of, you know, fan. We, you know, if I could only play like that, you know, <laughs> she's just awesome. right. Oh, my knees, my knees are are not good enough to 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 play like her. Like, there's just no way. <laughs> oh, I can't get so that low. low. And oh, yeah, it's, it's insane. Yeah. yeah, it's good stuff. It's ludicrous. I love it. <laughs> Yeah, that's like the one, like the only thing that makes me feel good about losing to Eddie in the most recent tournament is that he got training from Simone. So at least I can say like, okay, I lost to somebody that got training from Simone. I don't feel bad about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, as it should have been. Wouldn't it have been embarrassing if he didn't win? Yeah. That's right. But what about all the other four times? Because I hadn't had any training from her before then. So. Yeah, whatever. Oh, God. Yeah, <laughs> that's funny. Yeah, a loss is coming your way very soon, my friend. So just, I hope you're really appreciating your time with the championship belt because belt it won't be there for long. Once I finally start winning, it's, you're probably never going to see it again. So I love just, it. Uh, just cherish your time with the belt. <laughs> and now Eddie's looking at his calendar. Let's see, what do I have planned for tomorrow? I need to drill. Let's see. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> pull out the lobster, try and get as much drilling time <laughs> as possible. You know? <laughs> yep. Oh man. Well, thank you guys so much for joining us tonight. This was so much fun. Um, so I definitely fun. would love to, I would love to do it again sometime. Uh, just for sure. We definitely got to make that happen. And absolutely the, uh, the challenge that was discussed earlier, Eddie and Webby versus Barrett and Jana, that's, that's gotta happen. So let's, uh, let's figure out a time for that. And we, we definitely got to make this happen. I'm legit down for that. <laughs> like seriously, I'm on my way. Yeah, I mean, we can be there. <laughs> nice. We can be there in a couple weekends if you want. We're just, we're just right across. Not the, in October. I'm just right across the October. golf from you. So. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah. Awesome, yeah, we'll figure guys. something out for sure. This is definitely going to happen. Well, but uh, yeah, I can't, I can't thank you guys enough. This was a, a great night. And uh, anything do you, you guys want to say to everybody listening? And you want to tell everybody the the best way to to follow you or keep track of what you're up to? You can find everything on pickleballkitchen.com. Uh, now everything is on there. So if you want to listen to us on the podcast, you can listen to it on the site. You can go to pickleballkitchen.com slash PK podcast if you want to. Um, you can also find it on iTunes and you can also find it on Spotify. I also have a YouTube channel. Um, I post a lot of stuff on there. And of course, I have tons of articles. I have like, I actually counted the the word count for all the articles and stuff on the written content. And it's uh, a Almost to the first book of the Lord of the Rings. Jeez. <laughs> what? In terms of word count. <laughs> wow. He's such a nerd. <laughs> yeah. And I've read that book like twice, so I know exactly how long it is. Oh, that's oh. incredible. So I love you, it. Yeah, and I also have an email list. So if you, if you uh, sign up for the email, you'll get an eight, seven to eight week uh, course that will be in your inbox every Monday morning at 9 a.m. So you can get that as well. I'm going to buy Barrett Azima. <laughs> I still don't know what that is. <laughs> It sounds like some. Oh, it yeah. sounds like a car, like like an '80s car. A Zuma Zima. Oh, that's right. Yeah. That's right. That's Zima right. Zima. Zima. Thanks for having uh, us on, guys. Yeah, thanks again. It was awesome. It was really super fun. Yeah, thanks for being here, and have a great night. All right, guys. Thanks Bye-bye. for having us. All right, thanks. We'll see you. Bye. Wow. Oh another, man, that was so much fun. Another great episode. Another. Two yes. awesome guests. You know, having two guests on, man, it it's cool. It it adds a, a a different different dynamic to it, which I really like. Yeah, I love it. It's it's been a blast every time we have two guests on, especially guests like Jana and Barrett. I mean, man, so much great knowledge and just uh, fun discussions. I mean, it was great. Loved it. I agree. There's one other comment that I wanted to throw out here, and it was in the spirit of the Eddie and Webby versus Barrett and Jana conversation. And that's from Leslie White saying Webby and Leslie versus Christy and Ooh, Eddie. I still I still think that would be 
that would be a good match. Both Ooh. Leslie and Christy are are awesome players, and yes, they they're uh, they're not afraid to hit it. Leslie hit me in the throat last time I played against her. So <laughs> yeah, nice. I think I think yeah, so that's good. perfect. She should be on my team. That's I love that kind of spirit and that kind of attitude. So that's right. Yeah, I say we make it happen. I say the next Eddie versus Webby match is Webby and Leslie versus Eddie and Christy. What do you think? Well, we did talk about that where the the person that didn't win would be able to choose the term. So if that's if that's what you want to do, man, I am 100% on board with that. Yeah, I am absolutely uh, down with that. And uh, yeah, I'm putting it in right now. That's uh, That is my challenge for Eddie versus Webby part six, a mixed doubles match. And uh, yeah, I think that should happen. Let's do it. That'd be a lot of fun. Nice. You know what else love is it. fun? I love it. What's that? Who we're going to have on next week. Oh, man. This is big. This is real big. And to help set the stage, I think we have a little video that we should play. I agree. Let's roll it. <laughs> That's right. Oh, We're talking yeah. about the new era of Paddle Tech coming October 1st, which is next Monday, right, Webby? Um, I think it's next Tuesday, it's next Tuesday? actually. Oh, I what it does our Monday. calendar say? Let's let's double check here. We don't make sure we give the right information here. Yeah. I think it's uh let me see here. This is live TV, folks. You never know what's gonna happen. You're right, October it is Tuesday. 1st. You're right. It's a Tuesday. Yeah. So next Tuesday, October 1st, Paddle Tech is making a huge announcement of some sort. Nobody knows what. We don't know what. But uh, we actually are going to have the CEO of Paddle Tech on our show on that day, October 1st, the day of the big Paddle Tech announcement. So we're going to learn everything there is to know about what exactly is going on. Yes, you are going to want to tune in for that one. Again, it's Tuesday, October 1st, the day that Paddle Tech is announcing all of this stuff. Curtis Smith will be live, and he will be sharing it with all the millions of Eddie and Webby fans out there. So you definitely don't want to miss that. Yes, one. the millions and <laughs> millions. That was a really bad the rock impression impersonation that was not good at all. Like I started it and I realized it was bad and I just, yeah, it didn't you, work. No, you, you got to commit, man. Once you're there, you just <laughs> go all in at that point. Right. If you smell. <laughs> yep. Oh man. I don't know what happened. If anybody <laughs> isn't familiar with wrestling from the nineties, they probably have no idea what I'm doing right now. I have no idea what I'm doing right now, but anyway, next, next Tuesday, October 1st, you got to tune in. It's going to be awesome. Um, cause we're going to learn a whole bunch of things that nobody really knows right now. What's going on. Paddle tech is going to change the world of pickleball once again, somehow. That's right. That I love that video too. It kind of gives me chills cause it's some of my favorite, oh, yeah. favorite players in the world. It was done so nicely and cinematically. And, uh, that was, that was super cool. Like all yeah, of those, very players, well, very well everybody done. in that video, you know, they're, they're always, they're always in the, in, you know, in, in the top matches, just love it absolutely love it yeah i'm excited for that uh you know what else i'm excited for what's that to announce the winner of the eddie and webby hoodie hey -o! we're giving away a an, an entire hoodie not just part of a hoodie <laughs> an entire hoodie not just the sleeve not just the hood 
an entire hoodie, if you can believe that. I mean, we've got the biggest budget in all of podcasting right now. Even the we strings a- that you used to tighten, we're, that's included too? Actually, no, we could not afford oh, the strings okay. for the hoodie, so you have to buy your own string. No, there will be strings. There will be strings as part of the hoodie. Do not like worry it. about that. Very nice. Um, so, so what I'm going to do right now, I am pulling up the list of every YouTube subscriber that we have. So if you are a YouTube scri- subscriber, you have a chance to win this right now. And That's right. And guys, if you haven't subscribed, you have like 10 seconds to go to YouTube and search Eddie Webby and subscribe right now. Yep. And five, four, three, two, one. Time is up. I am going to get the list right now. So the way I'm doing this, I have the list of every YouTube subscriber in an Excel sheet. And everybody has a number assigned. I am going to a random, a randomizer app. And I'm going to click the button. And it's going to give me a number. Hopefully, it's not one of the like, 10 fake accounts I made to increase your subscribers right. by 10. Yeah, that's a, good, that's a very good point. Hopefully, this works out. Right. This is live, so who knows what's going to happen. So the number is 160. Ooh. As of right now, that means absolutely nothing to anybody. But it will mean something as soon as I look at this list of people. So where is this list? I need number 160. Number 160. Subscriber number 160 is... Rolo Urbano. Rolo so Urbano. if you if you have the YouTube account Rolo Urbano, what you need to do is send us a direct message on our Facebook page and uh, prove that that's you somehow. How do we do that? <laughs> I guess I didn't think that part through, but like because uh, you you used to be able to send messages through uh, YouTube, you can't do that anymore. Um, but hmm. the... just yeah, just tell us your Rolo. Yeah. Urbano. Tell us yeah. if you send us a direct message and you can prove that you're Rolo Urbano, we can figure it out. We'll be able to figure it out. I have ways to figure it out. So if you send us a direct message and your YouTube name is Rolo Urbano, you're a winner of the Eddie and Webby hoodie. Congratulations, Rolo. You yep. congratulations. Yeah, Rolo. I love the hoodie. They're real nice. Do you know what I'm thinking right now? Do you know what song is in my head right now because of the winner of this contest? I totally do. It's Tono Ro- what Tony Rolo Brown Rolo Town. Tony Brown yeah. Town. Check yourself right at the door. Yeah. And That's if anybody can guess what that what if anybody can guess what show that is from and you send us a direct message with that answer, you win an Eddie and Webby t-shirt cuz I don't think anybody's going to do that, but if you do, you win an Eddie and Webby t-shirt. It's That's as right. easy as that. <laughs> Just like that, guys. Man, this has been a great show. Uh, One more announcement I want to be able to make is Friday night. I'm going to be back at the Johnny Pickleball show, live streaming with that. We're going to have some incredible guests joining us. There's actually going to be two junior players that is going to be joining the Johnny Pickleball show. So we're going to have four of the top pros in our area along with two juniors. And I think that's going to be a lot of fun. Um, somebody's name that was uh, brought up tonight, Dominic Catalano, who Webby and I got to hang out with at the Beer City Open. He's going to be one of the people there in addition to Johnny Pickleball that's playing. So check nice. it out. If you're if you're in the Southwest Florida area, go to East Naples Community Park. Uh, 5.30 they start warming up. 6 to 8 is the show. If you guys can't do that, check out the live stream. We'll be live streaming through Eddie and Webby as well as the uh, Pickleball Academy of Southwest Florida Facebook page as well. So check it out. It's going to be some good, good stuff. Right, Webby? Yeah, as I love it. I love what you're doing down there in Florida. All the live streaming you've been doing has been awesome. The Johnny Pickleball show is awesome. It's been a great time. And I got a question for you, Eddie. Yeah, what's that? Are we doing Dinkin' Around tonight? We are. Nice. Yeah. So if you guys want to be a guest on Dinking Around and you have access to a smartphone or laptop with a headset, preferably with a mic, and you want to be on, Go ahead and reach out to us, and we might be able to make that happen. So, yes, a lot of good stuff. We to are be able very, to talk about. we are very powerful people in the world of live podcasting. Podcasting, Pod, podcast, <laughs> live podcast. So, you, you, that's, that's you want like to my rapper accent from uh, <laughs> the pickleball for life. Yeah, yeah. pickleball <laughs> is life. <laughs> oh man! But yeah. Anyway, is if you. And I, I am talking to you. Don't not not that person. You, if you want to be on the show live with us on Dinkin' Around, stay tuned. Send us a direct message 
we can make it happen. That's right. Anything else before we go to dinking around, Webby? Uh, that's all I got. So, guys, yeah, stick around. We're going to take this stream down. We're going to pull it right back up with dinking around with Eddie and Webby. So don't go anywhere. This has been episode number 51. So that means there's 51 of you out there still listening. And guess what? We what? love you. We appreciate you. Thank you. And, yeah, that's all I can say is that you guys are the best. Right? That is correct. On that note, I'm Eddie. And until next time, this is Webby, not Eddie, signing off. I'll see ya.